What's up, guys? Welcome to Van Goose Gaming. I'm TF Goose here with your co host, friend, compadre, Vendetta. Say hey, Vendetta. Hello. Hello. <laughs> and uh, this is our second Risk of Rain video. And we're a little bit better this time. A little bit. A little bit. Not, not lots. You know, we're, we're not great still. So, you know, you bring the hate if you like. That's fine. <laughs> It's still a blast, and that's the point. That's what we're trying to show here, and do a little co-op with it, because, you know, why not? So, if you're keeping track there, guys, uh, I believe Vendetta's on number one, and that makes me number two. And just look for the guy that can't shoot. That's me. Or that's jump. Like or jump. Play. Yeah, I'm really bad at jumping, Bo. You just bombed that one, too, real hard there, I might add. But then Oh, I wait. Yeah, never mind. See, see right there? That's what the problem is. As soon as I start to make fun of you, then I just screwed up myself, so... <laughs> no point in it but so <laughs> anyway guys we just want to give you guys another uh, quick look at the game here just because uh, we're having a lot of fun with it and it's a kind of a zoo but it's just a little bit tougher sometimes I think it, I guess it kind of has its ups and downs playing it with the second player do you think I mean yeah you know you've gotten farther than I have you know just playing it single player you know, gotten the difficulty up into the ha ha range or the uh, ICU range, which is above impossible, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> yeah, I got to the second hardest difficulty. Yeah, and, and that's when it's just out of control. And if you're not loaded out with like a complete bottom, like the to bottom of the screen isn't just totally filled up with awesome, awesome, you know, items that you've picked up and two or three of like the syringes that increase attack speed and those missiles shooting out everywhere. I mean, if you don't, haven't collected a really sweet arsenal by the time you get up to that stage, then, well, actually, you just won't even reach that stage. You yeah. know? I mean, it, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that basically you find out by about right around medium to hard difficulty if you're decked out enough. And if you are, then you can actually make a decent run on the game and get up to those higher difficulties and get up to, you know, level four or even five or whatever and just make a good run at the game. But it will make you humble very quickly, you know, around the medium to, to hard difficulty stage once it reaches there if you haven't collected a nice, you know, set of stuff. So, Yeah, it's all about drops. I mean, and in that sense, you know, it, it's completely random, so it's really luck of the draw, but... I, I can usually tell if I'm going to have a good run by about the end of this level if I've gotten enough uh, decent items, as it were. You know, I, I've played long enough that I know what the good ones are and what the bad ones are. And if I get too many bad ones, I'll just say, you know, to heck with it and just die on purpose. Yeah, just beef it and start over, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, because there are definitely several items that are that dramatically increase your survivability, even with just one of them. You know, because, I mean, what's cool about the game we've talked about before is, you know, the fact that if you collect the same item again, it stacks on your character, you right. know, which is really cool. But there are some items that are so good that even just having one of them is well worth it, you know, compared to getting two or three of some other lesser item, you know. So if you just get lucky with those drops, you know, and you, you buy the right chests and the imps treat you well and... You pray to statue a few times in a row that actually gives you an item all three times, you know. I mean, you can end up with a really nice run. But I mean, the thing that I notice when I'm playing with you is that because we're splitting our gold and splitting the drops, you know, we have to be even luckier. Yeah. You know, I because I mean, if there's just a couple of crap drops, then that means the team is that much less prepared. You know, we both need really, really solid, consistent drops. You know, because if just one of us is decked out pretty decently and the other one's not, well, then that person's either going to die, you know, and make it useless and we're not even playing multiplayer anymore, you know. <laughs> right. Or even the better equipped person would have even been that much more equipped if the second player wasn't there and, and hogging up all the mediocre drops even. So, I don't know. It's one of those things. I, I still think it's worth playing together and I would like to maybe... uh try it when one of us is playing like a melee character or just you know in some situation here where we're both not commandos even though it is kind of a blast <laughs> yeah. playing as two commandos so here we get the uh the stone golem boss and this dude i don't know i swear this is definitely my favorite boss to fight he's so easy yeah especially as a ranged character i mean he's so slow and lumbering and it's just a total piece of crap and <laughs> 
he's not even dangerous in the slightest. You just own him all day, and, and that's it. So it's the mobs that spawn with him that can give you trouble if you let him gang up on you. But the Absolutely. boss himself, you know, who cares? <laughs> yeah, we should point out, too, guys, that the game is still in beta. And so, like, maybe some of our complaints, you know, about multiplayer, I'm sure they're going to address in the future. You know, I don't think this game is... I think it's got about another month or two in development before they finish it, so I'm sure they can tweak and change a lot of stuff before actual release. Yeah, that's a good point, guys. Yeah, don't take uh, the footage here as absolutely, you know, the final version of the game. We're still uh, tweaking stuff here for sure, you know, and and getting this gameplay in before it's complete. But that's what betas are for, you know, so maybe it'll be different when it comes out. Maybe it won't, but uh, for sure, you know, if uh, the developers feel, and there's only, I think, two of them, <laughs> yeah. uh, feel that there is something that they can improve on the game for release, then they will, you know, and that's fine. But right now in its current form, you know, it seems like, you know, pretty much, I mean, many of the bosses are really not that dangerous on their own. It, it's just the, uh, it's the extra mobs that pop with them that increased spawn rate that really makes it uh, a challenge. And especially when you get guys, you know, ranged characters versus that golem guy who's just a a flat joke in my opinion yeah but uh later on we come across some magma worms and stuff and they're a little more fun and and then my personal you know kryptonite is the wandering vagrant the big jellyfish i hate that thing yeah mr lifesaver as i like to call him yeah no doubt he shoots all the, the lifesavers at you that guy i don't know i know you have an easier time with him than i do but for some reason he just seems to get my number every time i'd much rather fight the golem or the magma worm you know, although, as we learned a little later in the video, a pair of magma worms during the boss fight is, is not exactly fun. <laughs> I don't think I had actually seen an electric uh, magma worm until this playthrough. I was like, huh, I've never seen that boss mob. Yeah, yeah, I actually hadn't either. So that, that was a new one on me, too. But, you know, if you didn't catch it there, guys, too, it's uh, if you're still learning some strategy on the game, make sure as you complete each level that you burn all of the money that you can because when you click the teleporter and actually poured out it'll convert some of you know your cash into experience which is nice and everything but the xp isn't nearly as important as collecting a good item so if you got shrines nearby or the imp statues or or anything where you can burn that money before you actually teleport out definitely do it you know because it's it's worth it you want to try and get some you know a couple more items on the way out of the level is never a bad thing yeah you know, it could, could be the difference between life and death you know absolutely i mean the name of the game is you need to build your kit so items are, in my opinion, paramount. That's the my, that's my number one goal. When I'm playing, I go through the entire map, left to right or right to left, and try to find all the chests, all the statues, to get as many items as possible because that's going to make you more powerful, more survivable, and able to get to those higher difficulty levels. Yeah, and you're going to get XP along the way. I mean, it's going to happen. Exactly. You know, so, I mean turning gold into XP at the end of the level to me just doesn't seem like an, an equitable exchange, you know, and maybe that's something to, to look at, you know, in the development there to, to make that decision at the end of the match, you know, where gold translates into XP, maybe make it worth a little bit more XP so that there actually is a decision between trying to hunt down a couple more items or maybe go ahead and boost your character a level or two before you even jump into the next map. Yeah and make it a little bit more of a decision because right now it's no decision at all it's like you know where's all the items for the love of god give me something else you yeah know? i almost feel like it's like they didn't know what to do with the gold after a level but they didn't want to let you carry it over because then you would be able to just run through and buy up all the chest so they're like oh well we'll just let people convert it into xp and that's what they did with it but yeah i mean you're absolutely right there's not really a choice if you can buy items at this point you want to buy items Exactly, exactly. So maybe, I mean, as a gameplay element, something to uh, to consider would be to just pump up that amount of XP and, and give players a little something uh, extra as an option rather than just trying to figure out if they can burn up some items, you know, before they leave. Of course, that's assuming, too, that there's ways to spend that money reasonably close to the teleporter. I mean, you don't want to charge all the way back across the map and burn, you know, three minutes running across the map to find a couple more items and then coming back because you're going to pop another difficulty level in that time and that's bad news we know that yeah, that's true <laughs> you know so i mean and then you get stuff like this with these huge freaking you know 
energy ball guys. I don't even know what these dudes are. I forget what they're called. But where they start getting more than one life bar. You know, it's just wrapping over. And you find out really fast that you're not quite as prepared to deal with everything, you know, as you might have imagined. <laughs> It's very, very fast that they, they show up and start becoming problems. And the longer it takes you to take somebody down, then that's a longer amount of time that you're, you're uh, not spending looking for items, that you're not spending finding the teleporter and, and moving on. So killing enemies is important. You need the XP, you need the gold. But again, as, as we've said in the previous video, this is all about balance. You have to spend an equitable amount of time you know, trying to kill enemies, trying to find items, trying to find the exit, and trying to jump on a rope when energy beings are hiding it with their enormous frigging heads. <laughs> God, that was embarrassing. I hate that part. <laughs> I thought it was pretty funny, personally. Yeah, from your perspective, it was kind of hilarious. For me, when I was sitting here trying to, you know, use the force to find the rope, because I couldn't see it, I had to give it a shot, but whatever. So, you got gasoline, so I don't even want to hear about it. I know, that's such a terrible drop. <laughs> oh, I hate that one. It's so bad. But I, and this is, you know, I'm oh, sorry, I was just going to say, that's something else that, that bothers me a little bit when we're both playing commandos, is we're so apt to blow enemies off of a cliff. Yeah. You know, instead of actually kill them. And that's a detriment, too, because you don't get the kill, and then later on you drop down somewhere and you find this mass of enemies that you knocked down earlier and you're hoping to kill. So it's a kind of a pain. What's that? Oh, basic attack piercing. I didn't even see that when you got that the first time. Or when I got that the first time. I was just busy looking for the magma worm. <laughs> yeah, we get a random boss, you know, right here. Here's a magma worm. Not too bad, yeah, though. Yeah, can happen. You know, we didn't even touch the teleporter. As you can see right there, find the teleporter still on the screen. But there's a boss. Just why not? <laughs> Games decided to throw one at us, and that's begun because of that difficulty increase. We're up to medium now as the clock ticks, you know. And uh, we—I'm uh, not sure actually if we even tick up into hard. If we do, it's just barely, I think. Yeah, unfortunately, we didn't make it super long in this. Yeah, it's, it's just a little bit here. But I mean, this is the magma worm again. I mean, this guy doesn't bother me that much. You always see where he's going to pop out, and then he always heads for one of us. But the commando in particular has that number three ability that allows you to like roll out of the way and you're you're absolutely invincible during that roll. So even if he comes right for you and charges right through your character, if you're doing that roll it does no damage. So I think that as a physical attack, you know, that's not that bad. Especially since he moves so fast. He actually moves through your character while you're rolling, so it's really not that bad. You know. Yeah, but like you said, I mean, when you have like 50 mobs with you, it becomes a lot more detrimental. That's true, yeah, because you come out of your roll and there's like five guys over there ready to, you know, put the hurt on you, so yeah, that's never a good thing. But here, these uh, little shops are important too. I mean, you obviously, guys, you only get to choose one of these, so you have to make a decision and decide which item that you want. But uh, oftentimes there's some, you know, at least one good item in there that you can choose. But that's kind of cool, though. I, I like that as opposed to just a random chest because at least you get some element of control over the item that you're going to pick up. Yeah. If you've been getting a lot of defensive items, then you can go for something with a little more you know, juice to it instead if you know, given the choice. So, I mean, I dig that. And we, I think we pick up the Fear Lantern here, and we might get the chance to use it like once before we beef it here in a couple minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I some of the on-use items are definitely better than others. The Fear Lantern, uh, that's just okay. They have, like, items like a lychee fruit or something that'll heal you. And then they have other ones that'll make you completely invulnerable. That's pretty nice. So Yeah, no doubt. I mean, even with the 45-second timer on them, it's pretty pimp. You know, so. And there's our friend, the uh, electric magma worm, along with the, uh, the standard magma worm. Again, I think we were both a little distracted by this boss just because we hadn't seen it <laughs> that and there's like you know 20,000 jellyfish trying to kill us yeah it, it's really bad and it, as you can see here unfortunately we just get overwhelmed so the name of the game here guys if you want to take something away from this particular playthrough is try not to fight the boss in an area that's really contained you want to be able to run and it you know it doesn't matter you're gonna spawn a lot of guys that it, but you know you got to survive that's the deal if you die it's game over so Next time, we'll try and run a little further. <laughs> right. But uh, anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed the gameplay. And uh, we're going to do, a, we'll probably do another one or two of these just to play around with it for a little bit while we wait uh, for Terraria 1.2 and Starbound, of course. 
If you missed a couple of our other videos there, check out the links and uh, let us know what you think. We'll talk to you soon, guys. Thanks a lot.